Uh, hi there, and it's a great pleasure to come your way with another interview. My name is Miss G, and um, the person I'm about to talk to, she's a very beautiful actress and award-winning one for that matter. And I, I sometimes marvel when I watch her movies and she play humorous roles, and I'm like, ooh, how did she get to do this? A lot of her colleagues have tagged her as one of your favorites, and I know that you at home also know that uh, Yvonne Okoro is an A-list actress here in Ghana. Now, we're going to talk about a lot of things. She gives me fantastic interviews. I have no <laughs> doubt about that. And I'm sure that you're going to enjoy this one as well, from the movie industry to some of the things that followed on her Instagram page. Yes, one she doesn't know or ask care about. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> but we get to have a good time. And as Yvonne Okoro is here with me, hello, Yvonne. Hello, hello. It's been a very long while. It has, mm. yes. And I see that uh, you've been in and out of the country. I, I have been, yeah. Mm. yeah. Sometimes it's good to, you know, step away from all this um, chaos, or mayhem, and then just relax, go and relax somewhere. Mm. Yeah. I, I see a lot of, uh, you know, screen personalities, especially uh, the actresses and musicians do that. You know, they take a break and yeah. then they surface again. <laughs> what, what's, what's that? Is it for us to miss you? I, maybe, <laughs> maybe, but mm. no, it's sometimes you, some go and work outside and others too just take a break. Uh, sometimes you don't want to be um, engulfed in all this mayhem, you know, um, somebody saying something about you. You just want to step away and try and be human and mm. be yourself for a bit. Like, I, I love to go to a place where nobody knows me. Mm. It just, it's so much fun. Like, I don't have to take pictures. I don't have to explain who I am. I can eat with my hands and feel free so it's it's fun sometimes but then when you're in the spotlight you don't get that chance to experience life as you should I, I, when i hear this I, I i tend to think is it you not allowing yourself or it's people not allowing yourself it's people tell me it's people mm. i remember a long time ago well not too long but a while back i remember i went to buy i was house of cocoa mm -hmm. and that became news and the thing is, I don't even like Hausa Coco that much. I just developed, um, you know, likeness for it. I, I like it now. Mm -hmm. But back then, I didn't. I, I bought it for my siblings because they love it. Okay. And it was like, uh, she goes to buy Hausa Coco. What's up? What's wrong? Is that money finished? And I'm thinking, Hausa mm. Coco is... Now, I'll say Hausa Coco is delicious. Because we, my mom makes it at home okay. with Kose and the rest. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's good. So, I didn't see what the big deal is. But... And then sometimes you also don't want, you don't feel like dressing up and being Ivan Okoro or whoever people, you know, would want you to be. You don't want to go out with makeup. I don't want to go out with this hair. Mm -hmm. I, I have cornrows underneath. <laughs> I just want to go without my makeup. I have literally no eyebrows and mm -hmm. I'm just there. And, and it's, it's fun. I, it's people. You know, the perception people have of you and how they want you to be constantly. Um, we always want you to be glamorous. We, they always want to look at you in a certain type of way. So sometimes you need to step back and remember who you are and enjoy life. Is, is that to say that if you don't take care, you, you, you begin to be who the people want you to be? Definitely. Mm. It's something that happens to a whole lot of people. Um, um, stardom can be very... Um, it has a way of making you lose focus of who you are. Just imagine you never, ever expected to be this famous for people to love you for people to look up to you, you see people and they actually cry mm. like i go to america and the woman oh my gosh i was mm. going through a divorce and i watched a movie of yours to strengthen me she started crying i'm thinking what is happening why are you <laughs> crying you know mm. so pe it happens and um it, it can consume you the whole thing you think you're almost powerful you know and untouchable so that that Thing, if it's unexpected and you're not a grounded person that is family wise, you don't have a family that grounds your friends that ground you and make you realize who you are and not to forget who you are, you can forget and then you can actually start to think you own the world. Has you, the, you own the world mm -hmm. rather than not really own the world. Yeah. But as, as, as he occurred to you, you know, as he happened in your case where you wake up and like, you know, I'm Yvonne Okoro and uh, the world is supposed to, you know, succumb to me. No. My mother, mm -hmm. she'll call me, Yvonne, Yvonne. Uh, you know, sometimes, but you treat with mommy. Ah, mommy pa. And I, I'm like, Ma, do you know who I am? Is that my friend, you're nobody, Edna's daughter. Get up, you know? So I think I have that family that always reminds me that 
whether you're Ivo Okoro out there, here, you're, I can send you mm -hmm. and I can talk to you how I want. So it doesn't happen to me, not with, not with my family, not with, with my sisters. They don't, they don't give me any preferential treatment, sadly. Now, also, I noticed, just because you talked about your family, that, you know, a lot of your colleagues, you know, once they begin to get the attention, make some money, they move out of your parents' home, get a place of your own. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I tend to think that uh, you're still with family. I do. I still live with my parents. Why? They don't want me to move out. <laughs> they're like, I don't know. I think it's just, they're just, they're that conservative, traditional family. They believe that a man should come and take you out from your parents' house. You know, that, and then they believe that if a man comes to your parents' house, they have much more respect for you. They believe, it doesn't mean they're right, but then that's their, their mindset. So I remember that when I was, say, about 28, I really wanted to move out. And then we had this whole meeting. You know, Yvonne, I don't think you should, blah, blah, blah. So it turned out that I couldn't move out. I'm 28, and I'm thinking, I'm 28. Like, I can get up and move out. Like, why am I even asking them for permission? But you know, in our culture, and even in Nigerian culture, you need the blessings of your, because my dad is Nigerian, mm. so you need the blessings of your parents, you know. So that didn't happen. But finally, I made a nice PowerPoint presentation, <laughs> uh, which was last year. Mm -hmm. So finally, they have agreed that I can move up. But I live with my parents, and you know what? It's good. Because it's always good to come home to a family. You know, every time I travel and I'm alone, I come back and I miss them. Cause you know, my mother and I will laugh and talk about literally every and anything. You hear your dad screaming somewhere, your siblings are always around. So I have that close-knit family. Mm -hmm. So for me, when I go, I miss them all the time. So, yeah. But I understand what you're saying. I mean, it's more than now. Mm -hmm. You know, people will be like, oh, please, it's more than now. But however... I mean, that's, that's the opinion, and yeah, my parents, I can't argue. You can't argue. Yeah, I can't. But would you also say that, like they said, you know, it, it brings some dignity, which you've agreed yeah. to. D do you also stop men from coming to you? No, men, men can't come to my house. <laughs> that's for sure. Mm. You can't come to my house. Like, if you come to my house, that means I am literally saying that, unless I say, oh, this is my, my friend, and you can't pack outside. Like, what is that? They won't allow. It's like, they believe and say that why are you packing outside? It's more or less like you're trying to say that there's something going on between you people. You don't want people to know. Mm. But if he's your friend, would you just match him? If your girlfriend comes home, would you just walk in with your girlfriend? Why do you sit outside? And if he has nothing to be afraid of, why is he packed outside? Mm. So if you're my friend and you're, you come and you're a guy, we go, we sit in the, um, the porch. There's a little porch. We sit in it and then they're probably in the hall or they're somewhere in the house. And then we're, we're chatting. And then if it's a boyfriend, you know that if once you bring a boy home, this is going to be your boyfriend. You are not allowed to bring any other man home. So there's a lot of restrictions. Mm. So if you're not ready to be hooked, then you probably shouldn't bring any man so to the house. At that time, how were you managing, you know, your relationship? You know, because sometimes, you know, it happens. You have a boyfriend and you realize that this is not what I really bargained yeah, for. And yeah. you want to move on. You have to come and explain why yeah. you're moving on and all that. So yeah. how are you handling? Um, with my... when. I never, I don't bring guys home. Mm. That's the truth. So when I do, they know this is a serious relationship. And whenever I do, they know that that is it. Like, this is it for me. Like, at that point, he's like, ooh, I'm in love type of thing. <laughs> so um, when it's over, they don't see him around for a couple of, you know, days or weeks or whatever. And what happened to Osimisi? Ah, uh, yeah, we've broken up. Oh, what happened? Then you have to give them rundown, you know. You have to, my mother especially. Okay, so this happened. Okay, so now what do we tell your dad? We have to tell him the truth so that he stops asking you mm -hmm. where this person is. Because if you bring another person, it's going to be a problem. So then you have to tell. So I tell him all, like my dad would be like, so you're saying that now it's over. Are you sure? So when he comes to the house, I should sack him. I'm like, yes, <laughs> sack him. So that means that that's it. You can't bring him to the house again. It's over and done with. So if you know it's really over then you could say, but if you're not sure, then you could just say, oh, just a few issues, you know, mm, we'll deal with it. That, that's that's yeah. it. But I'm sure it's a lot of security for you. It is. Really it is, it so is. let's move away from family. But before we move away from I just remembered your kid's sister. Yeah. yeah so what's she been up to after Miss Ghana? Yeah. I see you go around with her and your older sister. Yeah. And your other sister. My other sister, Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, Rosalind is in medical school now. Mm -hmm. She's in her third year. And uh, so she's studying. I think she always wanted to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. So... I think finally she sat down one day, she got bored or something like that, I don't know. 
and then she decided to go back to school. So she's in her third year in medical school. Wow. And that's why she's keeping a low profile. I, I think it doesn't, we hardly see her at home because she's, she's in school. So she's in a hostel in school. So what happens is she only comes home sometimes on the weekends, hardly, like maybe an hour. She just come and spend an hour, come and eat all our food in the house <laughs> and then go back. <laughs> but yeah, school, those in school and those who are doing medicine, whew, when I see how she's lost so much more weight than she already is, I'm like, sign me up because yeah. I can't seem to lose the weight. So, In fact, initially I was going to ask about that, but I felt that I could ask later whether it's intentional to gain some more. God. <laughs> Careful now. <laughs> um, well, you know what? I, I had to gain um, a lot of weight for a movie I did. Okay. They, wanted, they, they had a look. They said I was too girly so they wanted me to look womanly mm -hmm. so i'm a mother so they wanted to have that motherly whatever i don't know why because i mean they are slim people who are mothers but i don't know i couldn't argue so mm -hmm. i had to gain a lot of weight now the losing has become a problem oh. because i realized how much i love food because when i gained the weight i was eating a lot and when i eat well, the best thing is um because back then i used to eat once a day mm. it's terrible but by the time I'm done with everything, you know, you can just eat once a day and you're tired, you sleep. But this one, I was eating constantly. And as soon as I eat, the, they said the trick is to eat and sleep. Mm. So as soon as I eat, I sleep. So I gain the weight. Now, after gaining the weight, they need to pay me to lose the weight. I'm sure that would help. I was going to say... That would ginger me, to, you know, because, because they was, paid me to gain the weight. Mm -hmm. They should pay me to lose the weight. But now it's become a, um, it's become a difficult situation. A very difficult situation. And you know what? I'm just like, you know what, whatever, man. I'm just going to have fun and I'm going to continue eating as, as, as I like. Now yeah. I have people sort of calling you out. Oh, no. You know what? Back then, when you're, when you're big and you're not a star, then you're not that kind of star, then they'll say, oh, you're big and they'll say stuff to you. But when you get to a certain point, it's like, Oh, why you can see? Oh, but it's a uh, FFO. They can't say much. They can only gossip behind you. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, okay. Or, you know, I'll go to the airport and somebody's like, Yvonne, you put on. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, me hot means, yeah. Hey. Yeah, that's what I have to say because now I can't go back and start, you know, no, elaborating. See. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is what happened to me and et cetera. I'm like, oh, me hot means, yeah. They're like, oh, amen. I'm like, yes, amen. Then I just go, but yeah, they don't, they don't say much. You're lucky then because some people get, you know, clapped at or, um, and swiped at on social media, media and all that. But let's talk about social media. You get people, some of your, well, sometimes they say they are not followers, they're just yeah. there to peep, you know, yeah. to see what's happening yeah. with you. Do you get people, you know, saying nasty things to you on social media? Yes, but you see, the thing is, I, I, I have a selective, selective deafness. I, don't, I, I select what I want to hear or what I want to see. So you can write every nasty thing you think you can write to me, but I can't read all those comments. I, I, I can't. It's not that there are so many that I can't. It's just that I don't bother to. I read some and I leave some. Some are good, some are bad. But that is the world. I mean, what, was, what, what would Jesus say? Hmm. I look at all these things and I'm thinking, should it affect my life because you have a negative opinion about me? What about the positive ones they're saying? Why shouldn't I pick those positive ones? It's different if you give me constructive criticism. Then that's, I would take that. But in my opinion what right do you even have to criticize me? You, you're on my page. If you think you don't like something about me, you know the good thing is you can swipe up. Mm. That's the good thing. So it's not every picture that I go and like. It doesn't mean I don't like that picture, but it just means maybe I have an opinion and then the opinion may not be favorable to that person or might hurt that person's feeling. What I'll do is I'll swipe up. And that's it. And if I want to gossip, I'll call my sister. Hey, which are we doing your crow? <laughs> and then, to be kind, you know, then we, we let it go. But then mm. to hurt people's feelings, that's... It's, I, I don't do that. So, so you are lucky. You have a sister who knows the industry. Yeah. I think even both of your sisters yes, do Elizabeth because as well. she also yeah. joins you every time. So you are lucky. But some people are not lucky, so they have <laughs> yeah. to do the gossip elsewhere. Yeah. It brings me to uh, the relationship you have with uh, Yvonne Nelson. Yeah. And that uh, we hear, or we've been hearing, yeah. that there was an issue. Then all of a sudden, I see a snap of both of you having yeah. a good time on set. Yes. And then I'm like, okay, so what's happening? Mm. We're friends. We're, you see, the thing is, when you're, when you I don't want to, you know, sometimes you don't want to sound too, oh, she wants to be too intelligent or whatever. <laughs> it's normal. You have friends that when you're growing up with, you guys just take a break from each other due to one reason or another or a misunderstanding. 
And this industry, unfortunately, does not encourage female relationships because there's always backbiting, there's always competition. Somebody, it's a hearsay, she, she say nonsense. So you get to a point where you decide, okay, you know what? It's constant. Oh, they said you said this. They said you said this. They said you said this. And if you know me very well, if I do say something about, my mother taught me something. She said, if you say it, we know we all like to gossip. Say you've said it. I mean, it's your opinion. At that point, this is my opinion of you. I may be wrong. So people who know me, even Yvonne knows that I am that type of person who would tell you that, okay, yes, I did say it, but I didn't know that. Okay, sorry. Okay. Then I just let it go. But um, it's over. I mean, after a while, you sit down and you start to think, why are you even fighting? It doesn't even make sense anymore. It's so unnecessary. And um, when you're almost 33 years old, this is the first time I've ever said my age. Wow. Yes. I'm lucky then. <laughs> <laughs> when you're almost 33 years old, certain things just, it just becomes so, un it, it depends. Some people mature faster in thinking wise, I mean, thoughts wise. And some people just don't. And I just got to a point where, um, I just picked up my phone one day, weirdly enough, I just picked up my phone and I said, Yvonne, where are you? She said, hey, what's up? Aww. And I said, I'm uh, nothing. Then we just, I said, you know what? Do you want me to come over? You want to come over to my house? And she said, I can come over to your house. And she came over and that was it. I said, forget it. We said some, some stuff about each other. Maybe we meant it, maybe we didn't at that particular moment, but I miss you. And then let's just get over and done with. And then that was the end. And we've been friends since, well enough, we actually go for prayer meetings together, so it's, it's unnecessary, mm. honestly. Like I'm tearing enough now. <laughs> <laughs> now it feels so good, but I, I, I don't know how long is this incident that you had to... Um, we, we, started, we, we started getting closer, um, say about, this, I think, two months ago, mm. two or three months ago, we started getting closer, yeah. And, and then I'm here thinking... You know, when you guys were not on very good terms, yeah. you know how the media is like. Yeah. I work here, so I, I don't know how yeah. to say it. But, you know, we saw pictures of you getting more close to Sandra. Yeah. And that Sandra was almost everywhere yeah. with you. Yeah. And then the indication we're getting, I don't know how true it is, that, you know, Sandra and Yvonne used to be friends. And yeah. you took sides and you took Sandra with you. Oh, my God. Yeah, <laughs> that's what we had. People say the wrongest things. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, you know what? The thing about social media is I show you what I want you to see. The truth of the matter is I was friends with Sandra. I was friends with Yvonne, then I became friends with Sandra. Sandra and Yvonne were not friends. Mm. So it was through me that they kind of became close. Oh. So it has nothing to do with it. So when people say that, I'm like, oh, what are you guys talking about? So um, no, we are all friends and um, it's, it's so just uh, whatever squabble we have is so unnecessary sometimes. And we both have, um, you know, I have qualities that I'm sure might irritate Yvonne. Yvonne too has qualities that she knows irritates me. Mm -hmm. So Sandra as well. So in the end, you you have to try and sift through and see which one, if, if the good or weighs the bad. If the good or weighs the bad, you can manage it. Some friends are manageable. You manage some friends. Mm. So we both came to those terms and we're good. You're good now. We're so good. how are you managing the two of them and your relationship? Oh because <laughs> now you're in the middle. I'm never in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never in the middle. <laughs> you know, everybody takes, it, it depends on them. I, I know they're, they're cool. I mean, uh, they, they may not be the best of friends, but I know they're cool. I don't think they have anything against it. I've never, it, it, Sandra never talks bad about um, Nelson and Nelson never talks bad about um, Sandra. And then I'm in. I'm there, and, and I don't discuss any with any. So you know. You're stranded then. I'm not stranded. I'm. I'm actually getting the best of both worlds. I have beautiful Yvonne. I have beautiful Sandra all to myself. So hey, <laughs> but you know what? They're cool. They're friends. I mean, they're not friends. I won't say they pick up the phone, and, but then you know they see each other and then they talk. But people don't know that. They always mm. think we see each other and they want to probably stab each other. No, but it's not like that. Now, one of the things that you mentioned that. Um, feels like um, I've heard several ladies talk about the fact that the industry is not friend, doesn't allow women to be friends or mm -hmm. friendly towards each yeah. other. And um, I am like, is it the case that we have a very small industry, you don't have too much to do, and so people would rather take delight in pulling one down so that they can shine? It's just a woman's thing. 
it's not even just about our industry. Women, we, we, I, I love it when they hear, say, I hear all this women empowerment thing. It's, it's nice and sometimes I, it's laughable a bit because a lot of people who yell women empowerment don't even empower their own sisters. They don't even empower themselves then to empower somebody. So I think it's just a woman's thing. You see another woman, uh, you know, going up and then the first thing you want to do is bash the woman mm -hmm. without knowing her story and knowing about her. Or she reminds you of something, one bad experience you've had with your family. I don't know, something. The truth of, of the matter is, it's just with us. And it's, I'm not saying all women are like that. People will be like, oh, well, <laughs> what do you mean? And it's, but let's be honest. Like, let's call a spade a spade. Even the men know it. The truth of the matter is that we women have a lot of issues. Oh, another woman will see another woman in the haircut. Let's say I'll see you with a haircut. You can't hear me. I didn't see I don't know. you're trying to hear me. There's no reason. And I've had that in my life. And I know a lot of women have had that. And a lot of women will tell you that how they have progressed or the most um, support they've gotten is from a man. And it doesn't mean there's anything going on between them. But they're ready to support you rather than a woman because she doesn't want you to go higher. And I have been through that. So when I talk about these things, it's with experience. Maybe some people too have had good experience with women. And that's great for you. And I hope I also go through that. But I can only talk about my experience. And my experience sometimes with women have not been pleasant. And we all know that. We do that to each other, mm -hmm. unfortunately. I don't know if it's, I don't know what it is, but yeah. Well, uh, also, um, still dwelling on the women yes. issues. Now, uh, people also say, I, I have met you. You few, hear a lot of things. I hear a lot of things. Because people, always us, yes, people always yeah, say. People always say. There are things I'm saying myself. It's that not I, Miss G who say No, 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 no. It's people, people saying. I always hear. Okay. Because I've, I've met you three times. And yes. I, I, I must say that you are a pleasurable person. Oh, thank you. But I hear people say, oh, I'll no home, Papa. And she's not friendly and yeah. it's difficult to approach her. Yeah. And so sometimes, you know, even when you like her, there's an attitude of unfriendliness around her or an aura of unfriendliness around her. So it's difficult to approach to say something. Okay. I've also heard people say that, um, you know, this girl is just too friendly. Like, can, can, she, can she, you know, have some, you know, thing about her that everybody just talks to her anyhow? I've also heard that. So that's the world. That's how the world is. One person will say this, another person will say that. So it really depends. The most important thing is your friends, the circle that you have, the people who believe in you, the people who know who you truly are. That's the most important thing. You have about a million and more people following you every day. You can't please everybody. I can't go around plastering a smile on my face when maybe I have a, I've had a very terrible day. I'm a human being. I'll go through certain emotions in life. I can't hide it all the time. I can hide it when I'm on set and I'm being edited, but I can't hide it on an everyday basis. And Ghana, when you know, or when you think you know your rights, as a woman, when you're assertive, they think you're too known. A man will be assertive and he's a boss, or oh, this one is a boss. But when a woman is assertive, oh, she's too known. That's, that's, that's how it is. If I believe that I know my rights, or I know what I deserve in life, I know I deserve to be treated a certain type of way, and then I say that I deserve to be a certain type of way, treated a certain type of way, then, 